Lead me to battle. All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to uh, Kale Game this time. In case you're wondering, I first picked uh, Kale, and this guy picked Aurelia into Kale, which is a re which is a really really fucking good p pick. Uh, Aurelia counters Kale super hard, actually. So I'm probably gonna get my ass kicked. So maybe this will be. A bit of a feeding Kale game. I hope not, but it honestly might be because it really is just that that big a that big a counter to Kale. The reason why she's such a big counter is because um is because of her dash and her crowd control. So she can dash to you and either stun or slow you, and then she has a true damage on hit steroid, which is a massive pain in the ass to deal with. So, you have to be very careful when you play against Irelia. Even if you have your ult up, she's still gonna shit on you most of the time. An an and the, the biggest problem with her is that since her damage is sustained damage rather than burst damage, you can't actually ult it. It's not like... Uh, it's not like playing against a Syndra where you can ult her ultimate, for example. Just to give an example. Or Nidalee, where when Nidalee jumps on you, you can, you know, you can use your ult when she pounces forward and uses her combo to follow up on her spear or whatever. You can't do that against Irelia because her damage is sustained damage. So, yeah, you can ult yourself while her uh, true damage steroid is active, but it's not going to save you because her steroid is longer than your ult, and even without the, the true damage, she can still kick your ass. This is not very good gank timing. Because, okay. Well, maybe it is, after all. I can flash for the kill, yeah. I, I didn't... I could have flashed for the kill there, but... He was gonna get it on his own, so there's no reason for me to do that. Really, it actually has TP here, which is a little bit annoying. I don't know what she's gonna do with that TP. I was gonna say that it was kind of silly gank timing, but it wasn't that bad. It was, uh, the, the problem was that there was a lot of creeps, and it was in a good position for me already before he ganked, because it was pushing towards my turret, which is what I want. Uh, because I don't want to have to overextend against a Nidalee so she can gank me, right? So I want the, I want the minions to push towards me, basically. I missed the cannon, damn. I tried to hit the cannon with my Q. Your time has come. Anyway, okay, Nidalee's not even in the area, so I can probably push this up and uh, be fine. An eye for an eye. I just want this wave to hit the turret. I can't allow it to freeze like that. Okay, so that's actually a good start, but obviously it's not to the to the credit of the champion or anything. It was just because I got a gank from Kha'Zix. Also, somebody asked in the comment section uh, in another video about split pushing on Kale. So I can talk a little bit about that. I'm probably not going to be split pushing this game, even though I have teleport. It's always better to split push when you do have teleport, especially in the late game, because that means you can actually join up with your team. Uh, if something happens, if a fight breaks out. But even though I have teleport this game, I'm probably not gonna use it to split push later on, just because it is Aurelia after all, so she's probably still gonna be able to 1v1 me, even if I even if I get ahead in theory, she she can probably still beat my ass. So you always uh <laughs> Or you only you only want to be split pushing when you know that you're not going to get one v one by the enemy top laner, right? So this is often the case for Kale because she scales so hard. Oh, good, good God. Okay. I don't know if I needed to ult there, but I wanted to be safe.
I flashed away from the Aurelia because I knew she had her ult. Which I just didn't want to deal with. I'm not sure why we couldn't kill the Nidalee right there. But yeah, I knew I knew Aurelia had her ult up, so I wanted to flash away before she could do uh, too much melee damage to me. If she does too much melee damage to me, she can finish me off with her ult from a distance. So that's why I was... That, that's why I flashed out a bit early. I don't know if it was too, too early, like maybe I didn't need to flash at all. But I just didn't want to take the risk. Especially because Nidalee was in the area. Your time has come. I'm gonna go get my... Uh, components for Berserker Greaves, and I'll get a refillable potion here as well. But yeah, pretty much you can... it. I mean, split pushing is a lot about experience, right? So it's hard to talk about split pushing in a game where you're not actually doing it, because it's such a unique situation. Like, you can split push and sometimes have that be the best way to win the game, and then there are other times where split pushing can just throw the game completely and you lose because of it. So, it, but it depends on the different, uh, it depends on what champions you're playing, what the enemy team has. Like, if you're playing against uh, Yasuo, for example, even as Kale, you're probably gonna struggle against Yasuo, because he's such a strong split pusher. I wonder if I should TP down here. No, they have it. I don't need to help them out there, so there's no reason for me to TP down. I could TP down for the dragon, but I don't think my team needs help with that. I think they're gonna take it without me. Yep, there it is. If the enemy team started fighting, uh, I mean, I could I could see on the minimap that they weren't fighting, but if the enemy team started fighting my my teammates at the dragon. I would TP down to one of the pink warts. There's no reason not to when when it's an infernal infernal drake. You want to secure that one, obviously, since it is the best drake after all in the game. But you can split push on any kale build if you're going with. I use three different kale builds. Uh, the one I'm going to be building this game is the Rylai's one. But you can split push with any of them. You can split push with Lich Bane Kale. You can split push with uh, Blade of the Ruined King Kale. I probably can't get this Karma, but I'm gonna try. Nice. That was awesome. <laughs> it's actually better for me to KS. Oh, that was close. It's better for me to take the kill there than it is to let the kill go. Because if I don't damage the, if I don't damage the karma, nobody's gonna get an assist, and the assist gold goes down the drain, right? So it's better that one, it's better that 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 one person gets the assist, than it is that one person gets the kill and nobody gets the assist. If no one gets the assist, it's just wasted gold. Oh god. Okay, this sucks. Yeah, she flashed for that. Just take that one. I knew she was going to do that, but I couldn't do anything because I didn't have my flash. And I'd already used my ult. Nidalee should be dead here. That was a sloppy-ass gold card. Oh well. It's okay. The important thing about this matchup is just that I don't die too much. Because I have to get a decent, uh, decent amount of CS. Yeah, he doesn't need my help. I may as well just push instead. She suicided so that uh, nobody got an assist. That, uh, that's actually really smart by Aurelia right there. Who's next? If she has TP, I might be in trouble here, but... Until she's alive, at least, I'm gonna keep pushing. And keep damaging the turret while I can. Okay, so at least she doesn't TP in behind me, like, to a ward or something. That would be really scary if she did that. An eye for an eye. 
So she pretty much used all of her stuff right there. Oh wow, am I in turret range? That's weird. Ooh, that was pretty clutch. I don't know where Nidalee is, so I'm gonna back up, back off. I don't know. That probably wasn't too good by me, but I didn't. I didn't expect my E to run out. Like, but the problem there was that my E just uh, my E just ran out. So I, as I tried to continue to DPS her. Kale actually turned around and went into melee range, which is a huge problem. Okay, Nidalee's mid lane. Ooh, no. That Aurelia. She's doing some risky stuff, but she's backing off in time, barely. The problem right now is that she ha actually can stun me. Uh, I don't know if she's in a brush here. I need to be a little careful. If she just comes straight out of a brush, it doesn't matter if she's low on AP, because she can stun me and kill me before I do anything. An eye for an eye. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to base here. Actually, oh, I need the gold for the Nashers. I'm gonna push the turret here. If I get... Okay, good. That's great for me. Whew. This is intense, dude. It really is a bitch. I'm gonna lose out on some minions here, probably, but it doesn't matter. I got my Nashers, that's what I wanted. My team is doing really well on their own. I I uh, actually thought that I was about to get uh, first turret, but my team had already done that. I didn't even notice. Next up, I'm going to get a Rhylice because health is great against Aurelia's true damage. It's literally the best defensive counter to true damage in the game is just flat health. So, Rylize is super great against Aurelia, and also Rylize in general is just insane on Kale for a multitude of reasons. I'm probably gonna start grouping with my team. Mm. Yeah, Aurelia already grouped with them. I'm gonna come around though and see if I can, if, if I can create something here. Oh, okay. I have vision. It really is by far the most dangerous person on their team. Maybe... Maybe Nidalee is as dangerous. It's hard to tell. But it really is the big problem. At least for me, she is. Nidalee, I can kind of handle. Alright, good shit. I should go back top lane. Because it really is pushing the wave. Hopefully I won't have to TP top lane. That would be a bit of a waste. Am I going to wait for a giant's belt? No. I'm not going to look for a TP play because the wave is too big top lane. I need to just get those minions right now. Mm, it really is going to join up with them probably and help out her teammates, so I'm going to push this lane. Just to punish her for not being in the lane. We have three people alive, two people bot lane, 
three people bot lane, actually, so I'm just free to push. Just gonna signal to my team that I'm actually doing stuff. Yeah, I'm not gonna TP down for that. I'm just gonna take this turret instead. I can totally kill that guy. If he's alone. Your time has come. He probably isn't. He definitely isn't. Check for the blue buff. So my team gets kind of wrecked a little bit because they overextended. It's not really my fault or problem per se. Just because I was already I was push I was putting pressure down that whole time. When your team dies like that, it's okay if you're doing something in return. Like, the, you have to consider the fact that when the enemy team went bot lane and got kills, I was pushing that whole time and I took a turret for my team. So imagine the gold distribution that happens there. Who do you think wins out? It's probably about even, and more importantly than just that, it's also about map pressure, right? So imagine I go top lane again, What's going to happen next time? I'm going to get the next turret, which is even more important. That's an inhibitor turret, so... This bottom wave is huge, so I'm not going to group up right now. If no one pushes this, that's going to be kind of a problem. Top lane is also pretty huge. I'm just going to keep going down here. Lead me to battle. Hmm. I still don't know where Nidalee is. All I know is that I'm alone and they might collapse on me here. The problem with this situation is that I don't have Vision of Karma. And I don't know if Nidalee, uh, or not Nidalee, I don't know if Irelia is trying to teleport down on me. All I know is the location of the one person that goes to my lane. Which right now is nobody, so I'm gonna push again. This is pretty much how you want to execute split pushing. I know I already said that I'm probably not gonna split push this game, but that is what I'm doing right now. So, as you can see, the procedure is pretty simple. If you can tell that they're collapsing on you, back off and try not to die. That's basically, that's the gist of it. And if they're not collapsing on you and they're fighting your teammates, you push the lane, kind of like this. And that Janna really, really really wants to die. Oh my god, I didn't get him. Okay, I'm dead. Whatever, it's fine. I'll tr I'll take that. It's a it's a bit unfortunate that I don't get the S reel there, but it is a one for one in terms of kill trading and I get the turret, so I'm satisfied with that. Maybe I could have killed the Janna and then ran away, but I greeted for the Ezreal, which was a mistake. So the real mistake there was not the the aggression of uh, the initial aggression, but just the fact that I kept going. That was the mistake. So I just shouldn't have went for Ezreal because I didn't I didn't know where the rest of the enemy team was. So when they collapsed on me, I was just screwed. <clears throat> I am on the way, babes. So, if you guys haven't actually seen how disgusting Rylice is on Kale, you're gonna see it now. And it is pretty disgusting. Okay. 
That's the entire enemy team. You see this shit? That's Rylos on Kale, baby. Holy cow. I just kited five people with that shit. Okay. <laughs> that was a bit of a weird situation. I can't take full credit for that situation because the enemy team made some pretty big mistakes right there. Basically what happened during that whole scenario was I ulted myself and beat the shit out of the Aurelia and the Janna. <laughs> Which is a little silly because they could have just turned on me when I came out of my ultimate, but it was difficult for them to do because of the Rylias, right? So... Essentially, their mistake was that they didn't immediately turn back on me after my ultimate. I am loving this blue buff, dude. <laughs> I seem to be getting that exact same blue buff every time. That's awesome. <clears throat> but even though the enemy team made a pretty big mistake there, I, th I think it was still a pretty uh, good showcase for why Ride Lies on Kale is so disgustingly good. It's, it's literally a permanent red buff slow, except it's AoE because it procs with your Righteous Fury. And on top of being AoE, it uh, it also slows harder than red buff does. Like the slow is just more powerful. So <laughs> it's just incredibly disgusting to play against. And as you can see in that last fight, the health was also pretty nice. I don't think the health is what saved me, but it kept me uh, it kept me high on HP that whole time. So pretty good stuff. And yeah, you're not gonna have retarded amounts of damage with that item because. You're switching out damage for utility, but that is okay because your damage is not going to stop spiking at any point. You're going to keep building damage items. Like you can see, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a Ginsu's Rage Blade next. That's not gonna be very pleasant to play against. Even if you're Aurelia. <laughs> And it really is dead. I'm gonna keep pushing here. They're gonna collapse and trap the Nidalee. Okay, this game is so over. They just got slaughtered. Jesus Christ. As you can see, I didn't do anything special, I just kept pushing the wave in the bot lane, and then it just collapsed for a free kill because they were running towards this area, and I could just come from below and kill them. Super easy. So, I guess that's two inhibitors for free. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna back off now, I don't wanna... I'm gonna put down a ward so I can TP back here if I want to. Putting down a ward in the uh, in the opponent's base when you have teleport is actually really smart because it means that if the enemy team does leave the base, you can teleport in there and damage the base or even win the game. Maybe I should have stayed actually and killed the Aurelia, but uh, I don't know. I didn't feel like risking it. There's no reason to stay around. Or stick around, because they're just going to collapse on me and kill me. So, this game is pretty easy so far, actually. Laning phase is, is the most intense, or, or was the most intense, but that's how it always is for Kale. Laning phase is always Kale's problem, because she is a super hyper late game champion. Your time has come. Uh... Oh, okay. I'm walking on a ward. <laughs> That's awkward. Who's next? Ow. 
Ow. Bitch. She has Luden's Echo, that's why she hurts. Anyway, this is a pretty easy situation. If we just sit back and push waves, they're gonna have to attend to uh, the super minions in the bottom lane and in the mid lane. So we can just relax here and not fight, and as long as we don't fight, we win for free, basically. That's how it goes down. Because look at this. They have to respond to it. They don't have a choice. So right now, Ezreal is down there. Okay, good shit. They went super hard for me. Which they have to, because I deal shit tons of damage. <laughs> yeah, that that was not even a 5v5 and we still won. Alright, so... I don't know how, how good of an example of split pushing that game was, because I actually got super fed. And normally on Kale, when you don't get this fed, split pushing is a little harder. It's a little harder, especially against someone like Aurelia. The funny thing about this game is that Aurelia actually didn't answer the split push. So when laning phase ended, I was never in a 1v1 situation against Aurelia, which was kind of bizarre. But either way, I think I would have won that situation just because I was so incredibly fed and because Rylai's on Kale is so ridiculously disgusting, so... But yeah, there are certain times where it's just better to group with your team rather than split pushing, but this was just not that kind of game. Which is a little strange considering what I predicted in, in the beginning. But, you know, when strange things happen, sometimes you gotta adapt to win, so. But I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you guys learned something useful, and uh, have a nice day. Thanks for watching.